Hi there, Jennifer Roberts here. Today, we'll walk through how to set up Blender and our .obj exporter, Xplane 2 Blender. These are the first steps in the process of creating your own custom objects for Xplane 11. If you haven't already, download Blender 2.79 from the blender.org download page for your platform and then install it. Blender is a complicated and powerful program, so you will most likely need to familiarize yourself with its basics by using the Blender documentation available at docs.blender.org. Next, download the Xplane to Blender exporter add-on. You can find a link to this on the Blender page of the Xplane developer site. This add-on allows you to annotate 3D models with Xplane-specific data and export .obj's. As of the recording of this video, the latest stable version is version 3.5.0 RC1. Make sure to download this first file and not either of the source code files. Note that this version of Xplane to Blender is Xplane 1130 ready and includes particle support. Now let's start Blender. You'll need to install and enable the Xplane to Blender add-on. Click on File in the Blender window menu, then on User Preferences. Click on the Add-ons tab, then at the bottom of the tab click the button called Install from File. Find and open the zip file that you downloaded. Now the add-on has been automatically unzipped and copied to a special scripts directory for you. The next step is to enable the add-on which I do by clicking on the user category on the left side to narrow down our list of add-ons, then by clicking the little checkbox next to its name. Blender is different from many programs in that by default, it uses right-click to select objects in the 3D viewport. I'm going to go ahead and change this while we're here in the user preferences so that left-click is used for selection. I also only have a two-button mouse, so I need to check this box to emulate a three-button mouse. Now that my preferences are set up, I'll close this window to go back to the startup scene. Let's confirm that we have the add-on installed and working. I will go to the Properties Editor and the Scene tab, then close some of the options to make the list more manageable. Our exporter is a UI enhancement, so we will find an explain section which shows a green check mark by Xplane to Blender, as well as the version number we expect, which at this time is 3.5.0 RC1. Now we'll create a simple example OBJ featuring a textured cube and a particle emitter just to get familiar with the basics of using Blender. I still have the default cube, lamp, and camera, so I'm going to delete everything with the keyboard shortcut X. Note that in Blender, the Delete pop-up confirmation appears under my mouse for quick access. Now that I have a clean slate, we are ready to create. Nearly all 3D models start from basic building blocks called primitives. The keyboard shortcut Shift plus A opens the Add menu, where I can select the Mesh option, then the Cube primitive. One should appear in the 3D view wherever the 3D cursor is, which is the red and white circle. Adjusting the position is easy. Click on the cube so it's highlighted in orange, then drag it around. Alternatively, you can change the values in the transform location boxes here, such as to 0, 0, 0, to get it back to the exact center of your screen. Next, we need to add a material to our cube. With it selected, click on the Material Properties tab in the Properties Editor. Click the plus New button, to make the default material data block and give our cube a blank, textureless material because materials are required to export. Let's save our work, then go back to the Scene Properties tab and click Add X-Plane Layers here at the bottom. Right now, we are only interested in the details of Layer 1 because we only have one cube in Blender's first layer. But as you get more advanced and add layers, just remember that each Blender visibility layer is paired with the Xplane to Blender layer settings here. Click the arrow next to layer 1 and change the name to Test, for example. We'll use this one click Export OBJs button that exports OBJs relative to the folder the .blend file is saved in. Now we have a file called test.obj in the same directory as the .blend file. 
You can open this file in a simple text editor program such as Notepad to see the plain text version, or put it in Sim to see the results of our work so far. Here I've attached the test OBJ we created to the default Cessna 172, so we see a plain gray cube on its front. Next, let's take a look at some troubleshooting help built into the X-Plane 2 Blender exporter add-on. The exporter has a logging feature which shows information, warnings, and export stopping errors. It's stored in an internal text file called xplane 2 blenderlog as you can see in the mouse over hint here. Let's open that within Blender to see what went wrong. I'm going to open another window here just for the text editor view by clicking and dragging on the tiny lines in the bottom corner of the window here. Then we'll open the xplane 2 blenderlog file. Note that you may need to scroll up to see its contents. Now we can see that Xplane to Blender has run into an error. Our cube needs a material assigned to it in this example scenario. Keep in mind that a .blend file can have multiple internal text documents called text data blocks. It may be helpful to create additional text files, such as a README file, to leave yourself notes. To do so, click the bottom plus symbol Name the file README and type your text. Thanks for watching this tutorial on the basics of getting started with the Xplane 2 Blender exporter add-on.